In our previous video, we explained simple spirometry, and now we will see what force spirometry is and how it differs from simple spirometry. First of all, it should be remembered that spirometry is a functional test that not only allows us to detect alterations in respiratory function and monitor them, but also to optimize functional aspects such as the developments of physical exercise. Let us remember that in simple spirometry, the patient performs a maximum inspiration followed by a maximum expiration using the time that they need. However, in force spirometry, the maximum expiration preceded by the maximum inspiration must be in the shortest possible time. In other words, it measures how quickly air leaves the lungs. Whereas in simple spirometry, the values we obtained were volumes of air, in force spirometry, by taking time into account, we will also obtain flow measurements. Force spirometry has greater diagnostic value. In this test, we can obtain two types of curves, volume time and flow volume. For the volume time curve, we have the time in seconds on the X axis and the volume in liters on the Y axis. A healthy person when carrying out the test generates a curve that has a rapid rise followed by a plateau, which represents the sustained effort of the person who continues to expire. The test ends when no changes greater than 25 milliliters per second are found in this plateau. For the flow volume curve, we have the volume in liters on the X axis and the flow in liters per second on the Y axis. The lower part, which is in the shape of a semicircle, indicates the inspired volume, while the upper part refers to expiration. The part of the curve corresponding to expiration has a triangular shape with a sharp incline that reaches a peak that indicates the maximum flow and then progressively decreases to the value of flow zero, which must obviously coincide with the forced vital capacity. The parameters obtained from force spirometry are the forced vital capacity, FVC, the maximum expired volume in the first second, forced expiratory volume in one second, FEV1, the maximum expiratory flow or peak expiratory flow, PEF, and the FEV1 slash FVC ratio. The forced vital capacity is the maximum volume of air that the patient can mobilize in a respiratory cycle and in the shortest possible time. The maximum expired volume in the first second, FEV1, is the volume of air that the person can exhale in a forced expiration followed by a maximum inspiration. Although it is measured in liters, it refers to the volume expired in the first second, therefore it is a measure of airflow. The maximum expiratory flow is the value of the peak or maximum value of the expired airflow. The FEV1 slash FVC ratio is the relation between these two parameters and represents the forced vital capacity that is expelled in the first second. We can use the vital capacity obtained in the simple spirometry test instead of the forced vital capacity. The relationship between FEV1 and vital capacity is called the Tiffano index. The vital capacity obtained in simple spirometry should coincide with the forced vital capacity, since the volume of air that that person can mobilize is the same regardless of the speed with which the air is expelled. Both the forced vital capacity and the FEV1 should be equal to or greater than 80% of the ideal value calculated for each patient depending on their characteristics, such as age, height, weight, sex, etc. As we explained in our previous video, the FEV1 slash FVC ratio should be equal to or greater than 70%. Now let's see it with a real example. The patient should empty their lungs as much as they can and then we ask them to take a deep breath in and expel all the air as quickly as possible. Come on. Take a deep breath as much as you can. More, 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 more. Okay, and now breathe out. More, 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 more. Empty your lungs. Well done. Let's see the results. 
The ideal force capacity for this person is 3.76 liters. She has managed to mobilize 3.42 liters in the real test, which is 91% of the ideal value. For the FEV1, the ideal value was 2.94 liters and she has mobilized 2.77, which represents 94%. If we calculate the quotient between FEV1 and force vital capacity in percentages, we will obtain 81% for this person. If we take the vital capacity obtained in simple spirometry, which gave us 3.58 liters, we can then calculate the Tifano index, which is, in this case, 70-70%. Therefore, the results show a normal pattern. What can we learn from this exploration of respiratory function? With the obtained percentages of vital capacity, FEV1 and the Tifano index, we can obtain an orientation towards a diagnosis of an obstructive or restrictive disorder. In the pure obstructive disorder, the vital capacity is not affected, but the FEV1 is less than 80%, making the Tifano index also low. This graph shows the volume time and flow volume curves of an obstructive disorder and the parameters that are decreased. In the pure restrictive disorder, the vital capacity decreases, so the less air that enters, the less air will leave in the first second. So, the FEV1 is expected to be lower than the reference value for this patient. With regard to the Tifano index, it may not change or even have a higher value than expected, because in a restrictive disorder, the decrease in vital capacity is usually more pronounced than that of FEV1. This graphic shows the volume time and flow volume curves of a restrictive disorder and the parameters that are affected. If we find a mixed disorder, it may be that all the parameters are decreased. For example, it may occur that a patient with chronic obstructive pulmonary disease had a complication that led to a restrictive disorder and therefore a decrease in vital capacity. In these patients, the drop in FEV1 is usually greater than that of the vital capacity and consequently, the Tifano index remains low. Although depending on the pattern that predominates the Tifano index could also appear increased or even normal. For the future physiotherapist, beyond the diagnostic value of spirometry, this technique, together with other pulmonary function tests, allows them to assess the patient's respiratory function. In relation to physiotherapy treatment, this test is interesting for monitoring and evaluating the effectiveness of respiratory physiotherapy.